Our fourth speaker from Sinn Féin and a candidate in Dublin Mid Midwest is Ono Bryn. Thank you very much, Pat, and uh, thanks for the invitation to come and speak today. I mean, something very interesting is happening uh, in this election. Um, for the first time, certainly for the first time in the 15 years I've been involved in politics, there's a real public debate about political and electoral reform. And I don't just mean a debate among the parties or in the media, but as somebody who's been out canvassing like all the other candidates since the end of last year, every night on the canvas, you're asked questions in relation to specific aspects of party policy on political or electoral reform. And that's never happened before. And that's irrespective of social class, of age, of gender, or any of the other demographic differences that divide out the electorate. For those of us who've been advocating political reform for some time, that's obviously a very welcome development. And I suppose from Sinn Féin's point of view, particularly in terms of issues around local government reform, which we started campaigning around at the end of the 1990s, around increasing gender equality, particularly through the use of quota systems internally in parties and through the selection of candidates, but also in terms of our proposals for detailed Shannad reform in 2003, and after the first Lisbon referendum, the detailed proposals we submitted to the uh, uh, Joint Oireachtas Committee uh, on Ireland and the Future of the European Union in terms of our relationship between the Oireachtas and the EU institutions. There's a whole series of issues which many of us have been trying to raise for quite some time. And for the first time, there really seems to be a kind of a critical mass of public interest, and hopefully on the other side of the election, uh, political will to implement some of these changes. I don't want to spend any time telling you what's wrong with our political system, because everybody here knows and doesn't need any politician or aspiring candidate to tell you that. What I'd like to do is very briefly give you a sense of some of the principles and some of the policies that Sinn Féin is advocating in this election, uh, as outlined in our document towards a new republic published last week. And for us, I suppose, the key issue, the most fundamental reform that's required, is to find new ways to empower the citizens themselves. And not just to empower citizens to vote more, to be engaged in electoral politics more, but to be actually involved in making the decisions that affect their social, economic, political and cultural lives. And that's why, in addition to uh, the various proposals we have for lowering the voting age, uh, for making it easier to register, etc., we're very keen to see local government reform engage citizens in, for example, participative budget making, in local citizens' referendas, and other institutions that aren't just about consulting uh, ordinary people in local communities, but really handing power over to them in meaningful ways so that they can affect change in their day-to-day -day lives. The other thing that's absent from a lot of the political debate uh, is about rights. How do we reform our political institutions, our political culture, and the behavior of all political parties in a way that enshrines people's rights, not just political rights, but social, economic, and cultural rights into the day-to-day -day fabric uh, of governance? And that requires a rights-based approach to constitutional reform, but also it requires right, rights-based institutions for equality-proofing and thoroughly equality-proofing legislation and other policy proposals brought forward by central government. Other key issues in some of these areas other speakers have spoken about, so I'm not going to repeat them, but issues around transparency, increasing public access uh, to the places and spaces where decisions are taken, uh, increasing public access to how political parties raise and spend the money uh, that we have. And also, obviously, to echo other speakers around the need to strengthen freedom of information legislation, protection of whistleblowers, but also the need to constrain lobbyists uh, and to control and regulate that growing area uh, of activity. Accountability is obviously a very key issue uh, as well, and I suppose one of the things we're trying to do in our document is find ways of using the doll, strengthening the doll, its committees, and the role of TDs to hold the government of the day to account through a variety of measures, all of which are outlined uh, in the uh, document. And of course, there's corruption, and rightly, both legal and illegal forms of corruption. Uh, and for us, there's a need to strengthen the powers of the Oireachtas to be able to impeach uh, TDs or ministers who are found guilty of fraudulently behaving, uh, whether it's with expenses or other forms of state money. But also the need uh, to abolish state appointments to public boards and to have an independent uh, appointments-based process to remove that element of cronyism from our political culture. Obviously, electoral reform is there, and we have very different proposals to the other parties. We're much more in favor of seven-seat or multi-seat constituencies. We believe they're more democratic, and they're much more uh, representative of political opinion on the ground. We would also like to see the introduction of a list system, about a third of TDs, 
to be elected through that mechanism to try and increase the diversity both of different demographic groups often excluded from politics, but also to get people with specific levels of expertise engaged in what goes on in the Dáil. And then in terms of institutional reform, absolutely we need stronger local government. And I suppose for Sinn Féin one of the key things is what's the function of local government? It should be about the delivery of services. It should be about providing those basic services that in most other parts uh, of the EU, local governments are responsible for to free up the Oireachtas to engage in its primary legislative function. And a lot of our proposals are about transferring those powers of public service provision directly to stronger local uh, authorities. And of course, we also need to reform uh, the Oireachtas and as I said earlier, its relationship with the European Union. Sinn Féin also has in our manifesto a number of very specific proposals about sp strengthening the All-Ireland institutional framework put in place by the Belfast Agreement. And in addition to that, we'd like to see, for example, the possibility of a minister with specific responsibility for All-Ireland uh, uh, reunification to try and energise those aspects of the agreement for the benefit of people north and south. Briefly, in conclusion, I suppose, I want to throw out a couple of warnings, or health warnings, uh, and a couple of opportunities. One of the worries I often have when listening to some of the debate around political and institutional reform is that often people think this is a technocratic fix to problems that are often to do with our political culture or the way in which our parties and political parties operate. And I think we need to find the balance between institutional reform but also challenging and changing, renewing the way in which politics operates at a party political or cultural level. I also don't think that political reform is a substitute for changing the policies that governments implement. The idea that, you know, if we had a more responsive and democratic system, maybe we wouldn't have one of the most unequal societies in the European Union, let alone the OECD. And while political reform is essential, we also need changes of direction in the types of policies that are implemented across all areas of economic and social policy. The two opportunities are this. There is increasingly, uh, as the uh, introductory speakers outlined, a growing critical mass of support for reform. And I think that's an opportunity that all of us who want to see a more democratic form of governance uh, genuinely embraced. Uh, and therefore, whichever party uh, is in government after this election, I'm hoping that what they'll do is engage all of the political parties so that we can contribute to that debate uh, constructively and cooperatively. And I think we have a real opportunity here to do something which many other countries across the world do, which is when the republic that you've founded up until this point, albeit with the many criticisms that somebody like me would have of it, clearly is failing then let's move to establish a new republic, a second republic, to try and reconvince the electorate and all of the people who live and work in this country that politics, political institutions and governance is something that's very important to be engaged with, to be supportive of, to make our country better for everybody who lives here and comes here. Thank you very much.